Hey friends, Tushar here from TechZoom and today I am bringing you OnePlus 2 unboxing and review. So here is the box. Finally got hold of an invite and bought it from Amazon India. It's available for 25,000 rupees. This time the box is much smaller than the OnePlus 1. What's in the box is the OnePlus 2 handset, one USB Type-C cable, USB power adapter, user manual and quick start guide. So now let's go ahead and unbox it first. Here is the main OnePlus 2 handset unit which is well covered. Next is USB power adapter and this one is USB Type-C cable. It's a reversible USB connector. I'm just trying to get you a clearer view here. Now switch on the phone and follow on-screen instructions. I assume you already know the drill, yeah? I went through some of the settings to try before I could actually tell you something. Display is crisper than OnePlus One and it has got 5.5 inch screen with 401 ppi density the phone is powered with the snapdragon 801 octaco processor which has 64 bit architecture and clocked at 1.8 gigahertz 4 gb ram and oxygen os which is based on stock android 5.1 the backplate is same textured sandstone the main camera is 13 megapixel with a dual LED flash, IR laser focus sensor and front camera is 5 megapixel which comes with no distortions. Stereo speakers are at the bottom. To begin a walkthrough, let's start with the most distinctive feature, the fingerprint scanner. Go to settings and locate fingerprint option to set it up. I already scanned both my thumbs and you can add many fingerprints. Adding a fingerprint is very easy, just follow the instructions. Phone's uh, home button itself has the sensor. Once you are done, you can actually see the another print which is listed here now. You can always rename those prints and scan as many fingers as you want because you might be using the phone with either hands, right? Next is the customization options. It doesn't have too much right now, but uh, I expect more to come here soon. You can basically switch to a dark theme and also you can choose ascent colors for that, which is basically changing the color uh, for icons and toggles. Colors for LED notifications can be set from here. Uh, if you see the difference between a Sinogen was, uh, it had a full color mixer and this one has only few swatches, there are about 8. Gestures is another addition to the oxygen noise. You can actually set 4 gestures as of now. One is for the waking up the phone, a camera, flashlight and the music player. In sounds and notifications, there are whole new bunch of choices. The sound of notification output uh, actually I found it little lower than the OnePlus One. Overall the Oxygen OS has tried to keep things minimal with stock Android and avoid as much bloatware as possible. OS itself is not fully matured and few bugs still exist. App permissions could be one of the USP for Oxygen OS. Uh, we have been crying over how Android apps keep us a whole lot of access to our data. And what you can do is with this, you can simply turn those off. For example, if Facebook is asking you for SMS messages, well, then you can just turn them off right from here. Which I think is a very pretty cool feature and 
it's your phone man don't let apps take control of it and i really like that about oxygen os on main screen when you long hold you get few options to further customize the look and feel such as changing wallpapers there are tons of new wallpapers that look great others is widgets and settings in settings you can choose icon packs there is only one system default right now but i guess more to come soon here choose app drawer grid size to accommodate more icons on one screen and the another option is called shelf this is interesting one honestly it gives a quick access screen adjacent to the home screen that keeps all the frequently used apps and contacts in one place you can add as a personalized picture as well but this makes life so much easier that you don't need to go to the app drawer all the time for the tasks you do quite frequently now the camera it's using the minimal ui for the camera app not bad but not so good either sometimes gets really buggy and not too friendly as well i like uh, iphone's camera app the most so i tend to compare everything with that if you notice here it does make use of the laser auto focus pretty well not super fast yet nonetheless it focuses on the objects well without uh, we needing to touch on the screen hopefully this will improve further with more software updates swipe right on the app and you get options to select different modes such as time lapse slow motion photo video manual mode and panorama go to settings for each mode and you get further options such as aspect ratios in video mode you get to choose uh, whether you want to shoot a 4k video 1080 or 720p in manual mode which i like in particular there are again lot of options to choose from the range of settings are for iso temperature shutter speed and focus interestingly uh, all these settings are placed on a dial which makes using very 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 easy uh, i like this part of the app as i said i'm not an expert in manual mode but still i could actually use those without any issues swipe left and you get quick access to photos it gets weird when you don't get a confirmation or you don't see a confirmation of the photo you click navigate here every time you click a photo which is kind of boring the camera hardware is superb though and the one we saw on MI4 was not good at all i did shot a few good photos here are those I'm now going to brag about the music and the max audio enhancements loaded on this phone. The output from the speakers isn't as loud as I expected, but the quality is good. 
tap on the volume buttons and you see you get a quick access to these preset modes volume button should have been separated i think you can go further and get access to the equalizers and presets If you try and turn off the max audio the the output drops significantly Go to the audio tuner app from there you can choose what you prefer or you can also customize and save your own preset as far as the benchmarking goes obviously it's showing it on the top with the benchmark score of 49000 and plus here is a quick 3d benchmarking test i did where animations lighting texture rendering are working flawlessly with its massive hardware components The phone is a dual SIM both supporting 4G connections. You need nano SIM cards to use with this phone. Remove the back cover to open the SIM tray and you can insert two SIMs side by side. and if you notice the battery is not removable here for back covers you can also order range of other designs including bamboo covers which makes the phone phone stand out in the crowd those are available for approximately 1600 rupees or uh, you can also get them for about 700 if you decide to use some other brand now quickly showing you the gestures how they work before actually i conclude this video The phone does warm up quite a bit too much when the flashlight is on for about 5 to 10 minutes noticeable warming was felt when i did those benchmarking tests so i think it will heat up eventually when you decide to play graphic intensive games at least until the issue is fixed now as far as the concluding statement goes i would say the phone does have an amazing hardware especially considering 25000 price whatever issues i felt were more software related than the hardware and i expect oxygen os to get matured as it grows fingerprint scanner is not very useful for everyone you can install cyanogen on this phone but again those available roms right now are not 100% ready the three way hardware switch for the alerts works good but different audio profiles cannot be made usb type c cable is good you get one with the package but the problem is uh, this whole thing is still new you need to buy and carry additional cables and connectors i suggest you can get micro usb to type c connector which you can actually use with your old phone cables which you have at home i wish they officially bring cyanogen for this phone if you already own one plus one and looking to upgrade to this phone then you can hold on 
don't stress too much on the invert system right now and you actually don't need to hurry because your phone is still great oneplus 2 is an amazing phone at great price worth it no doubt about that but i don't think it's a flagship killer and definitely not worth begging for the invites that's all folks if you have any questions buzz me in comments do like and share this video if you think the video made any sense do subscribe to our channel have a wonderful day and see you soon